Greetings from Rescue Shuttle Control. We're very pleased to see the tremendous progress you're making in uh, working on your battery and power charging systems. Uh, you've been doing a great job of uh, both collecting data and controlling circuits using the logic in your hero board. Today we're going to continue with that. You'll recall that in our last session we concentrated quite a bit on uh, sending information through the serial monitor. And today we'll shift gears a little bit and uh, return to the subject of communicating information through the uh, light emitting diodes, the LEDs. We have a little twist in that today, and uh, I'll begin today's session by introducing you to a new component. It's a little bit familiar. It looks pretty much like one of the LEDs that we've used before. It's right here. I've got one of them that's plugged into the, to the breadboard, and I have another one right here. But you'll notice it's, it's a little bit different because it has not two, but four different leads coming out of it. And the reason for this is that this is a three color LED, or also known as an RGB LED. R, G, and B standing for the three colors, red, green, and blue. By simultaneously turning the red, green, and blue components on, one can create custom colors of different shades. And we'll see soon how that works. What we're gonna first concentrate on here is how to correctly hook up the RGB light emitting diode in order to separately control the three color emission channels. If you look carefully at the LED that I have here on display at the bottom of the breadboard, you'll notice something about the leads. One of them, in this case, the second one from the top, is just a little bit longer than the others. That's a special lead because that's the lead that will be the ground in our circuit. So we will connect that long lead to ground and each of the three shorter leads will be supplied by our five volt supply that will need to be on in order to turn that color of light on. So you'll see up above on the breadboard how we've wired this up in order to achieve that result. You'll notice that the second lead from the top, which should be the ground, is connected in our breadboard to row number four on the breadboard. And row number four is connected by this white wire to the ground terminal on the hero. Now, each of the other three leads is connected by a color-coded wire to a pin on the hero. So you'll notice that the uppermost lead here is the red LED, and that's connected to a pin on the hero. This green wire corresponds to the green LED, and it's connected to a pin, and the blue wire is connected to yet a third pin. Now, we're going to use those pins to turn those LEDs on and off in just a little while. But before we uh, do that, I should just illustrate really quickly how this LED will look when it's functioning. You'll notice that as we need to always do, we've connected three current limiting resistors, 220 ohm resistors, in series, one resistor each, for each color channel in series with each lead of the LED. So if we follow this through, for example, with the red channel, we would have current flowing from the supply into, in this case, row number three of the breadboard through the current limiting resistor into the LED and then out through the ground on row number four and back to ground to complete the circuit. So we can manually check this to see what happens. If I temporarily unplug the red lead here, leading into the red channel of the LED, and plug it into a steady five volt source, 
which I have provided right here on the red column on the breadboard just so it would be handy to have. If I plug that in, like so, we can see that we get a nice red glow from our LED. On the other hand, if I wanted, I could plug the blue channel in to 5 volts. And now I get a blue channel. And I'm not restricted to just one channel at a time. So for example, if I wanted, I could plug in green and blue at the same time and get a blend of those two colors. Or I could say, disconnect the blue. Yeah, oops, one. And connect the red and the green at the same time and get uh, a sort of a greenish yellow color. So we'll be making use of that uh, capability as we figure out how to make the hero turn these channels on and off for us at will. So I'm just going to return these pins to their original position on the hero board because those will be important for us to discuss uh, soon. You'll notice that I have the three channels of the LED plugged into what turn out to be the output pins on the Hero 11, 10, and 9. Now, there's something a little bit special that's going on here. What we want to be able to do is to turn on the LED color channels with differing intensities. And that would seem to be a difficult thing to do given the fact that this is a digital output. Digital meaning that it's either on or it's off. So it's either zero volts or five volts. So what we're gonna do here and a new concept that we're introducing is the idea of commanding a digital output, a digital pin here on the hero with an analog input, an analog command. What would that mean? Well, it turns out that although we can't change the level of the voltage on a digital output, we can change how long it's on or off. So what we're going to find when we start looking at the code for this function is that we can call analog write on a digital output. And that will come along with a number, a number that will be between 0 and 255. If the number is 255, it means keep this on all the time. If the number is zero, it means it's not on at all. And if it's at a number in between, say 128, which would be right in the middle, that would mean have the voltage on for part half of the time and off for part of the time. And so the duration that the voltage will be on its high value will be proportional to the value of that number. Now, you won't actually be able to see the light flashing on and off because it'll be flashing on and off much too rapidly for your eye to see. But if, for example, we turn it on half on and half off, the net effect that you will perceive is a light that's half as bright as normal. So that's the way that we will go about providing an analog input to uh, what would seem to be a, a digital output. Now, we are going to need to be able to command the hero to do these things that I've just described. And so for that reason, the next thing that we really ought to do is move over to the code window and see what kinds of new or different constructions will be necessary in our code. So here we have what should right now look like a relatively familiar uh, set of lines. We've introduced at the top of our code here the uh, declaration of three integer variables, red, green, and blue. And I think you'll recall that those numbers that we connected red, green, and blue to on the hero were pins 11, 10, and 9. So these will in fact be the identifications of the 
pin numbers corresponding to our three color channels. So we can now just forget about those pin numbers and red is a synonym for pin 11, green for pin 10, blue for pin 9. We will now be using those immediately in the setup routine. Remember setup gets run once at the beginning of our execution and we need to call pin mode in order to make each of those three pins an output function. So far, there's nothing too new here. This is uh, pretty much just the same sort of uh, thing that we've done before. But now will come the difference because now we're going to command these digital outputs with an analog value. So in order to do this conveniently, because this is something that we're going to actually want to do repeatedly, we're going to write a custom function. And this will be a custom function that will perform that uh, pin assignment for us whenever we need it to. And it will we'll be able to customize the amount of on or the amount of off that each color channel uh, needs. So let's go ahead and uh, right after our setup routine here, let's introduce a new custom function of our own devising. And I'll put it in right here. And let's look at it. We've decided to name this function RGB color. And the name pretty much tells what it does. It is going to basically take three input values, red value, green value, and blue value, and use those to activate the pins with the appropriate duration. By the way, I'll just mention something that I, I should have mentioned a little bit earlier, and that is that this technique of taking a digital output and turning it on and off for a specified period of time has a name, and it's called pulse width modulation, or for short, PWM. So that's what we're referring to here in our comment when we say that this is a custom function to set the three pulse width modulated color channels to any given mixture. Um, you may also notice if you were paying attention that on our hero board, right underneath the uh, row of digital outputs, it says digital PWM. Again, PWM is pulse width modulation. And so that uh, is a, a little reminder to us that we can uh, uh, modulate the length of time that these digital outputs are on. So what does our RGB color function actually do? It does a very simple thing. It calls analog write three times, once for each of the three pins, red, green, and blue. Remember, those are just synonyms for 11, 10, and 9. And the second argument of each of these calls of analog write is just the desired number between 0 and 255 that we would like to have that channel be on. So very simple function. It just calls analog write and turns those uh, pulse width modulated pins on for the specified time. And we can change on the fly what those times are every time we call RGB color. All right, so that new function is now ready and waiting for us to use. It's in our toolbox. And so now we can go ahead and get to the main event. That is, we can put code into our loop function and see what code will be executed over and over again using this function that we've just defined. All right, so let's go ahead and insert some code in, some very simple code, but it will be a useful illustration that will show us how this will work. So now what we have in our loop function is a cycling set of calls to our custom function RGB color. And they're interspersed with delays so that we can sort of see the light on with a particular color for a while before it switches to the next color. So if we read through this code, we can see that what we're doing 
is first of all, we're turning on color to what will essentially be a pure red because it's gonna have red on for a 125 and blue and green at zero. Then we'll wait with that turned on for 800 milliseconds and then we'll switch to a pure green, zero, 125, zero. So that should just turn on the green LED. Next, we'll do the same thing. We'll switch over to blue, 0, 0, 125. Again, after an 800 millisecond delay, we'll try a mixture. So the next one will be RGB color with red S64, uh, green S32, and blue is zero. This was uh, my attempt to try and come up with a color that would approximate yellow. You may want to play around with these numbers yourself a little bit to get a color that you're happy with, but this is just an example. We follow that with another call that is a mixture of red and blue, comes out with a sort of a purple kind of color. And finally, uh, we're going to turn all three of the LEDs on at 125 to get something that's uh, more or less white color because it's an equal mixture of those three primary colors, red, green, and blue. Again, you can tweak those a little bit to change the appearance as you wish. The last thing we do here is delay for two seconds, so it'll dwell on the white light for two seconds before then repeating and going through the cycle again. So if that code is correct and we haven't dropped any semicolons or done uh, made any syntax errors, we should be able to compile it and run it and see if it uh, does what we want it to do. So let's go ahead and check the compile, see if that works. We're compiling it, it's done, no errors. So we should be uh, able to go ahead, upload the code to the hero and see the sequence of color flashes that uh, we designed in our code. Uploading. Uploading is done, and we now have a sequence of flashes. Let's wait for it to get here. We're in the white phase, red, green, blue, yellow, purple, white. And back again, there's yellow, purple, white. Red, green, blue, yellow, purple, white. So that uh, seems to have worked pretty well. It's a simple demonstration, but it gives us some ideas about some of the things that we can possibly accomplish using uh, these methods. Now that we've understood this uh, very uh, interesting and potentially useful technique of pulse width modulation on our digital outputs. I would invite you to go ahead and experiment with your own combinations, your own logic, your own color combinations, until you feel uh, comfortable and uh, happy about uh, your ability to manipulate these. Uh, the next time, in our next session, we'll be thinking about how these techniques might be used to give us color-coded information on our main concern right now, which is battery charging. You'll recall that last time, we were getting battery charge level uh, information through the serial monitor. So we had that information in text form. We might now be able to create some logic that would give us a color coded information, say ranging from red to green, an indication of our uh, state of battery charge using the techniques we've learned today. So um, I hope that that uh, gives you something interesting and challenging to work on. And until next time, remember, build everything and invent safe.